everyone. In the ongoing series on biotechnology, today I, Charudogra Rawat from Ramjas College University of Delhi, will be taking up advanced tools and techniques and in that I will talk about the next generation sequencing, particularly about the Illumina platform. Now we have been dealing with many uh, tools and techniques in biotechnology and an important aspect when we talk about using the biology to create technologies is to know about the sequence of DNA. Now DNA is the hereditary material and basis of all the uh, cellular processes that is happening. So to create any kind of technique and technology, we need to know a lot of things about the de uh, you know, deoxyribonucleic acid which is the DNA molecule. Now sequencing basically refers to knowing the order of the nucleotides which becomes again very important. So the specific objectives for today's session would be to understand the concept of the next generation sequencing and to understand the principle and procedure of the Illumina sequencing as I mentioned. The first major foray into this DNA, DNA sequencing was the Human Genome Project. We all know about this project. It was basically used as the first generation sequencing and we use the method which is very commonly called as the Sanger sequencing, the chain termination method that I discussed subsequently. But it took almost 13 years and costed some 3 billion dollars and was completed in 2003. So it was a whole long process of this uh, DNA sequencing of the human genome uh, which was a major breakthrough. But as we can see, it costed a lot of money and it took a lot of time for this to be completed. Now what was the method employed to sequence this human genome? It was Sanger sequencing method. What does this Sanger sequencing refers to? Now as I said, DNA sequencing is basically determining the exact arrangement of the or the order of the nucleotides or the bases in a DNA molecule. Now this is very important because when we say that all the information is contained in DNA, then that information is basically directly related with the order of the nucleotides. So we need to determine this order of the nucleotides and it is termed as DNA sequencing. There has been exponential improvements in sequencing DNA more rapidly and more cost effectively and the entire genome can be sequenced for about $1000 in less than a day. So you can imagine when we started with the human genome project, it took more than 10 years and multiple institutions were involved, costed a lot of money and then the sequencing could be done because that used the first generation sequencing, this angle sequencing. But nowadays there are many methods and platforms which has made it very effectively, the cost effectively and very rapidly this DNA sequencing process that we will be discussing today. But just to review and talk about what the Sanger sequencing method is, it is the sequencing by synthesis and it is also termed as the chain termination method. Now as you can see here, there are you know nucleotides, we know the nucleotide arrangement, it, it contains a base, a nitrogenous base and then there is a phosphate backbone that how it is attached. You can see that at the point there is a OH molecule in the, in the bases. But when this OH molecule is replaced by H, then no longer the chain can be extended. So whenever the synthesis of a nucleotide strand takes place, particularly DNA molecule as in the case with replication, there has to be a primer where you have this 3 prime OH group which is there and then the DNA polymerase bring, you know, joins another nucleotide next to it by creating a phosphodiester bond between the 3 prime OH group and the 5 prime phosphate group of the coming nucleotide. That is how basically it happens. So this is how the synthesis occurs. Now what happens in the Sanger sequencing is that the synthesis is done. However, instead of a normal nucleotide or a normal base, a base that causes the chain to terminate, no more extension of the chain takes place. And that is why because there is a replacement of OH group by H uh, which is there. So as you can see there are four tubes and in each tube we have basically added the three normal nucleotides. However, one DDATP or DDTP or DDGTP and DDCTP. 
So, DD basically stands for dideoxy, uh, you know whatever that nucleotide is, nucleotide phosphate. So, in each there is only one group that is added and you know all the four common nucleotides or the normal nucleotides are also added. So, as you can see when the synthesis takes place then wherever it reaches the uh, base which is the chain termination base that has been added the chain gets terminated. Now, since there are normal nucleotides as well there will be a series of fragments that would be obtained which has terminated at the same base, but at different uh, you know points. So, for example, in the second uh, tube you can see that there are three different kinds of fragments that are formed or four different kinds of fragments that are formed which are terminated each at that particular nucleotide, but that nucleotide wherever you know it occurs. So, that is how basically it happens because there are normal nucleotides. So, it basically means that when it, it is like A, G, C, T, 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 A, then A if the termination nucleotide is added it can right stop at the first A or the normal nucleotide can be added at the first A and then it can continue with A, G, C, T, T and then at the next A then it comes it basically ceases. So, you get a pool of fragments where the chain is terminated as the first A then the next subsequent A or it just passes through that A with the common nucleotide and sub, it, it terminates at the further next one. So, you get a different sized fragments as shown in the diagram. Now, when you run these on the gel because you get a series of fragments and we know about the principle of agarose gel electrophoresis that it separates the DNA fragments based on the size. So, you take all these four tubes contained and you run simultaneously on an agarose gel and when it runs you can see that there is a difference between the fragments. Now, this kind of a gel basically resolve one nucleotide base difference even and therefore, you can just read from the bottom which is that whatever nucleotide is coming the first that will be the first nucleotide you know the fragment which is coming the lowest and then you can read the lane which is coming the next fragment, then the lane which is coming the third, the fourth and so on you can move up the, uh, the, uh, the agarose gel and you can read the sequence of the nucleotide. So, this was a chain termination method that at every nucleotide the chain was terminated and then when run simultaneously on an agarose gel electrophoresis the fragments separated on single base pair resolution and then you can just directly read from there where that what um, nucleotide comes the next. Now, this uh, was later on automated and you know in fact all the four nucleotides were labeled by different fluorophores and they could now be added onto the same nucleotide and then in the automated one we had we did not run the agarose gel electrophoresis, but we had a capillary gel electrophoresis I mean not the normal horizontal gel. So, while uh, you know these different fragments are formed they are simultaneously loaded on a capillary. So, the resolution was even better and then it was the flor fluorescence you know then simultaneously as it passes through a point then the fluorescence was detected and was captured and the peaks were given. So, that is called as a chromatogram. So, in the chromatogram you can directly see that the different nucleotides the four nucleotides will have different peaks different colored peaks and from the chromatogram you can directly read the sequence that is there. So, this is the Sanger sequencing chain termination method which was the sequencing by synthesis. So, as the complementary sequence is synthesized the nucleotide basically uh, you know it is read that how it is done. Then as I said the advancements occur and this advancement was basically the generation of short reads which are massively and, and a massively parallel sequencing technique which is a fundamentally different approach that revolutionized sequencing capabilities and launched what is termed as the second generation sequencing methods or more commonly called as the next generation sequencing or NGS that provide orders of magnitude more data at much lower recurring cost. Of course, it has many other advantages, but the major thing to start with 
was that it was producing much more data at a low recurring cost and very fast. So, this short read massively parallel sequencing technique commonly termed as next generation sequencing revolutionized the biotechnology sector. Before we talk about the principle and the procedure of NGS, one of the platforms of NGS, let us look at what are the advantages of NGS. So, advantage of NGS, one major thing was that a priori knowledge of the genome or genomic features is not required. So, in here the synthesis occurs whatever way that it occurs, you know you do not require actually any knowledge because you know when we talk about DNA polymerases, we have that idea that the synthesis can only occur if there is a primer. Now, the primer can hybridize to its complementary strand only if there is a complementarity. That is you should have some idea about the sequence then only you can design a primer and then that primer can actually go and bind to that particular sequence which can then be extended by the DNA polymerases. So, Sanger sequencing for example require that there is certain kind of knowledge which is a priori knowledge of the genome or some kind of a genomic feature which is there. But as we will see this next generation sequencing does not require that. Then second is it offers single nucleotide resolution making it possible to detect related genes, alternatively spliced transcripts, allelic gene variants and SNP so the single nucleotide polymorphisms which basically means that it has a very high resolution. We will see that these method these uh, you know platforms are also termed as high throughput sequencing methods or it is also called as deep sequencing methods. So, we will see that many small reads of the same sequence are obtained which authenticates or you know you which which validates the uh, the uh, the occurrence of those particular uh, sequences uh, which we are reading. And that sequencing it is such a high resolution technique because we generate a particular sequence multiple times. Therefore, the single nucleotide resolution is what it offers. Then again you know it, it makes it possible to detect the related genes or as I said alternatively splice transcript or even single nucleotide polymorphisms. These are the different kind of variants that are basically required and we need to assess for assessing the various kind of differences that are occurring in a particular expression. So, again this is a lot of advantages for us uh, using this NGS platforms. It has a higher dynamic range of signal. So, as we said say, uh, saw that you know uh, the, the only f certain kind of fluorophores could be attached to the four nucleotides and therefore, the signal uh, you know what we appear what, what is uh, basically detected the range is very small. Here as we will see that a lot of higher dynamic range of signal can be produced. It also requires very less DNA or RNA as an input the nanograms of materials are sufficient. So, the Sanger sequencing require a larger amount of input or the initial source which needs to be sequenced, but in here very less DNA RNA. So, you know wherever there is a less DNA that can be extracted or you know where the DNA extraction or obtain uh, obtaining the DNA or RNA is a challenging task then also the next generation sequencing can be employed. And again it has very high reproducibility as I said because it employs deep sequencing method where a single sequence is many times uh, you know sequenced therefore, it has a higher it promises a higher reproducibility as well. So, these are some of the uh, advantages of uh, uh, next generation sequencing. So, we come to the core principle of Illumina NGS we will be discussing about one of the platforms as I said the initial platforms that was. Uh, discover that was invented which is the Illumina NGS workflow. Now, Illumina NGS is based again on sequencing by synthesis. So, we will discuss each of these terms we understand what sequencing by synthesis means it is same as the Sanger sequencing where as the synthesis occur. So, as one nucleotide is incorporated that nucleotide is red. So, that is sequencing by synthesis and we will also use reversible dye terminators 
that enable the identification of single bases as they are introduced into the DNA strands. Now, again this is a chain termination method. Now, procedurally how this differs from the Sanger sequencing is that it uses reversible die terminators. We will talk about that what this reversible die terminators means, but the terminator basically means the two terms are common with Sanger sequencing, the sequencing by synthesis and the terminator, the chain termination part. However, what we use is what is called as the reversible die terminators and we discuss that subsequently. So, let us look at the workflow of the NGS. Now, this is a little populated slide, but let us walk through that. On the top, the genomic DNA is given. This is a common general workflow of an NGS uh, uh, sequencing. We will discuss in detail about the Illumina subsequently. But the first thing is basically you obtain the genomic DNA from whatever source, the, the, so the, the, sequ that the, the DNA that you want to sequence. Then you fragment it. As you can see, many procedures are given for fragmentation. So, you break it into smaller pieces. This, can, this is basically a random fragmentation that has occurred. Then as you can see, there are small adapter molecules that are attached to these fragments. So, first of all, these fragments because they may contain overhangs, then through end filling mechanism, they are made blunt ends. Then to these blunt ends, the adapters are added. I hope you understand all these terms because we have done in detail the recombinant DNA technology. And we have already discussed all about adapters and end filling mechanism and everything. So, you can please refer to our previous lectures uh, for the same. So, you obtain different fragments, you end fill the different fragments or you chop off the overhangs or whatever, but you make the blunt ends and you attach the adapters to it. Now, after the adapters are attached, on the right hand of your screen is shown the Illumina platform. However, just beneath it or on the left hand side, there are other platforms that are also utilized. For example, an emulsion PCR uh, method has been also given or the method uh, which are, uh, you know, which are more advanced such as the, uh, the, the platform which is shown on the left hand side where the direct sequencing of the fragments can occur. But we will skip these ones or we will take it in our uh, uh, subsequent lectures. I discussed the right hand side one where you can see that the fragments which are attached to the adapters are now loaded onto or attached onto a slide kind of a thing. This is called as a flow cell. So, in the flow cell then the amplification of that particular fragment takes place as shown and we will discuss in detail. And then you know it is analyzed by the machine which is the Illumina sequencing sequencer platform. So, all these things is basically done and then based upon what we detect, we get the reads and then uh, you know we subsequently go further to organize this particular or know the particular sequence of DNA. In the inset, there is a box where the tagmentation is also written. So, we will talk about this where the fragmentation and tagging are combined together and done this. So, this is the basic overflow. The idea is that you have the genomic DNA, you fragment it, you attach the adapters and then you sequence it. That is basically the general workflow of NGS. Looking at the workflow of Illumina NGS, let us go step by step. The first step is the library preparation. So, library preparation, we, we already know the term library. You know, we rem, if you remember, we talked about the genomic libraries, the cDNA libraries, so, library in biotechnology particularly related to uh, DNA etc is referred to the representation of the entire genome or the collection of the fragments of the entire genome is basically the library. So, first thing is that we create this kind of a library. So, for creating the library when we did genomic library or cDNA library, we created the libraries in vectors. In here, we just create a pool of fragments. So, the genomic DNA is fragmented. Now, this fragmentation, if you want to do specific fragmentation, you require specific nucleases and we have already done that talking about the restriction endonucleases which cut at specific sites. In here, we do not need specific fragmentation, but we need a random fragments. 
So, we can do by any of the physical methods such as sonication or you know ultrasonic radiations we can basically provide or just by mechanical shearing. So, by physical methods we can chop off or we can also use nucleases you know which are basically maybe cutting after a certain point of time. So, we also can use these nucleases and there are fragmentation methods that are used. Then these are the fragments that have been created as I said because it is random fragmentation you can have fragments which have overhangs. Overhangs are single nucleotide strands that are hanging then their end filling process creates the blunt ends on both the ends and those red ones are the adapter molecules. Again what are adapter molecules we have already discussed adapters are the oligonucleotides short oligonucleotides blunt fragments of known sequences that can be attached on either side of the fragments that has been occurred. This particular step is termed as tagging. So, you fragment and you tag these adapter we know the sequences you know we it is it is an oligonucleotide that has been generated by us. So, such kind of molecules or fragments will basically be formed. As I said there is something which is called as tagmentation. So, in tagmentation the tagging and the fragmentation is done simultaneously rather than step by step. So, we use topoisomer basically these uh, uh, transposases are used which are basically carrying these adapters and then genomic DNA is fragmented. So, these transposases or uh, you know they cause the uh, fragmentation of the genomic DNA and because they are also calling uh, uh, carrying the adapters these adapter molecules are attached to the end of the fragments. So, both the both the procedure occurs simultaneously and it is termed as the tagmentation. Step 2 is what is called as the cluster generation. Now, cluster generation what is required by the Illumina sequencing is a flow cell. A flow cell is a channel for absorbing the uh, mobile DNA fragments and it is basically used for the it, it is called as a sequencing vector vessel. So, now the fragments attached to the adapters are loaded onto these flow cells. So, how this flow cells uh, you know attach these adapter containing uh, fragments and how the sequencing actually occurs we will discuss in our next session. Thank you.